Lovely. So, yeah, here's the modern real power director edited video because the audio quality when I record audio on CapCut is garbage, and when I record audio on ca crap content, I mean CapCut, uh, CapCut. And when I record audio up there, it's not actually saved into the audio system files, so that's why it's power director. So, yeah, if you don't like that, then, uh, sorry. Anyway, this is a video review thing of the Titan Reboot. The actual first episode comes out September 9th, uh, Saturday on Cartoon Network. I think it's going to be a simultaneous premiere with HBO Max. Uh, I mean, just uh, Max. I think it's supposed to be like that. Because I doubt it's going to be a TV exclusive. Maybe just like a next day premiere on Max or something. But uh, yeah, out of all the totally not illegal leaked clips that I've seen. And the trailers and all the news and things that I've heard. Plus the official and official clip release, of course, now all the trailers and promos and things. So uh, yeah, I guess now I can formally an opinion. So it's like a week before the actual first episode comes out. Anyway, before that, my opinion on the original Tiny Toons. Anyway, it's good in comparison to Animaniacs. Well, that's basically a story and things for another video. But, um, yeah, by itself is good. And I only see a little bit of Tiny Toons before the TV was announced. And the trailers and things started coming out. So I decided to watch and then I decided that it was good. And Plucky is the best character of all time. So, uh... Yeah, it doesn't really matter if the rest of the reviews is the attention to so the, the rest of the reviews girl, but as long as I get the plucky character correct, then to be honest, I, I don't really care. Well, first off, they made Buster and Babs twins for some reason, and I'm pretty sure that people who haven't actually watched, actually seen the show, know about the characters, already assume that anyway, so that's just confirmed with the suspicions. And if you have any idea about the actual characters at all, you know how horrific and horrible that is. But apparently this is supposed to be kind of a continuation of the original, but not really because there's character changes and design changes and everything. So it sort of is, but it isn't. And once again, the original creator, Tom Ruger, had no involvement. And um, yeah, he's even discussed that the Buster and Brad sibling change. So uh, yeah, that really shows the complete greatness. Anyway, about the actual club, Buster and Brad's and stuff. And okay, so the separate dorms and Buster is sad, then he's singing with really smooth bad lip sync animation, and then Plucky comes in and then he starts doing his normal wacky plucky shenanigans things and then Buster are fighting and doing comedy and it's really poorly executed, horribly animated, horribly edited, horrible audio, and I be a sound effect slapstick. And then Hampton comes in doing his uh, Hampton thing. And, uh, yeah, that's the clip. The clip is overall good, but one thing I want to mention first is the inconsistent animation. So, at yeah, the beginning part of Buster singing with the smooth bad lip sync animations, like it was done by Tonic DNA. And I heard the Snipples also working on this. And they did the best animation for the Animaniacs reboot and Lutus cartoon series. So, uh, yeah, that's good. But some of the other clips, totally not illegal leaked clips, by the way, that I've seen, have really shitty garbage animation. So, I don't know what other studios are working on this. But, um, yeah, also in this very single clip, they switch from actual good, high-quality Snipple or Tonic DNA. Looks more like Snipple animation to just complete, god-awful, cheap, trash animation. And it looks like garbage. And, um, yeah, totally obviously animated by a different studio. But, uh, yeah, another Maxwell transition just cuts the garbage animation. Unless they, Snipple got the Z-team to animate that sequence. But, uh... That's basically all I have to say about the clip. Also, for some reason, the voice quality on Buster's audio is way worse than any other character in the clip. So, uh, I don't know why that is. And he's speaking of voice down to the voice acting and voice actors. So, um, yeah, basically the only actors reprising their roles is Jeff Bergman, who plays Bugs and Falcon and Sylvester. He also did for some episodes of the original. I think he basically did all of the Sylvester episodes, I think. And uh, I think Bob Bergen also coming back as Porky, which is weird because I'm pretty sure Eric Bowles is, vers is voicing him for the Day the Earth Blew Up, Lincoln's cartoons based movie, and also in the horrific Space Jam 2, which I shouldn't have even brought up in the first place. But um, yeah, Bob Bergen is back to voice Porky. I don't know why he didn't for those other two projects, but um, yeah, they're basically the only ones reprising their roles, and the rest of the Toon characters, of course, were like Eric Bowles and other actors who've been recently performing with them and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, for the actual, like, other main cartoon, uh, Tiny Toon Star characters or whatever, uh, well, the voices are fine. It doesn't really sit right with me that they basically recast every single character for the characters and actors that were tailor-made, put together for the original show, and I'm pretty sure 
that you can't even imagine the actual original characters with different voices or actors. So, uh, yeah, the voice actors basically were the actual character, and replacing them basically makes me like completely different characters because they basically are different characters in the view. So, I guess it doesn't matter. So, uh, uh, yeah, well, I already got my distaste out of the way from recasting the characters, even though, uh, yeah, just for, just for the, for the content and the characters and things, but for, like, the actors who sadly died, like, Joe Lasky, who voiced Plucky, you know, if they're gonna get dim voice actor, they might as well just not even have Plucky, because to not have Joe Lasky voicing Plucky, it's just bad. But anyway, for all the other act for all the other actors, I don't know why they didn't just get the original voices to come back and do their voices. Especially since Candy Milo, who voiced uh, Sweetie in the original, who's now a main character for some reason, is also in the modern voice of Granny, who's also in the show. But they don't have her also doing the Sweetie voice. I have no idea why. And for Trust Me, Neil, I guess that makes sense, since this was in the production at the same time as the Anime Next reboot and other things. So I guess that would be a good reason, but... Yeah, for the other characters, I just don't really understand. Maybe they were busy with something else. I guess that's the most likely reason. But yeah, I don't really mind Babs' voice or Buster. He seems like a crusty 30-year-old man because, well, I don't know how old your boss is, but he's just not super crusty and not like an actual person his age is supposed to be with an unspecified age. But, uh, one thing I do like about Buster was the Buster since he's an uh, accomplished voice actor of, like, I think, like, 10 years or something. Gives them an opportunity of having different voice ranges, doing different impressions and voices and things that you see a little bit in this clip. Even though that was more of a Babs thing in the original, but none of the promos you actually see are doing the normal Babs thing from the original. So, uh, yeah, now on to Plucky's voice, which is completely and entirely messed up. ...of the famous Warner Brothers characters, for instance, Bugs Bunny, uh, became Buster Bunny. Now, in, in Plucky's case, he was obviously Daffy Duck. But with Daffy, uh, they said, we want the same voice, I mean, with Plucky, we want the same as Daffy's voice, but different. So I said, oh, well, that's typical Hollywood. What do I do with that? So I just moved it from a frontal lift to a lateral lift. <laughs> I understand. Decide, I can handle this, clown. Seems like somebody's looking for a brawl. Hey, that counts as one of mine. I thought tennis required balls and rackets, not TNT and frying pans. Informed there'd be singing on the first day. Anyway, uh, yeah, as Joe Lassie explained, and as I will explain also, sort of uh, edited video, like a Joe Lassie interview and ran about the Daphne Plucky Duck clips, but the voice that Plucky is actually supposed to have is sort of like Daffy, but it's in the front of lips, kind of like a girly saliva in the back of your mouth lisp, or as Joe Lassie calls it, a lateral lisp. But here is just someone doing a bargain bin Daffy impression and it just sounds bad and it doesn't even sound like the character is supposed to sound. But um, yeah, I guess just how the voice directly directed the actor to do it even though it sounds nothing like the original character. And it just sounds bootlegged and it doesn't even sound like his... And if, if he was just a bargain bin Daffy impression, it does seem like it's supposed to be some sort of heart or soul or effort into it. Hello. What say we ruffle each other's feathers, hmm? Oof! <laughs> Joe Lasky did. Well, he was a professional voice actor for like, I think like 30 years or something. But I don't know how long he was a voice actor when he started doing time, just maybe like 10 years or something. But it sounded like that it was an actual real character that you were encountered walking on the street or whatever. But here it just sounds like that everyone's doing voices, which they are, but it doesn't really sound like an actual real life character, real life emotions and real life things happening to real life people and real life characters. So uh yeah, I hope you understood that. Though I do think that it's impressive that the voice of Plucky is also the voice of Hampton, because the Hampton voice actually sounds like it's supposed to be the character, but it sounds more high pitched and nasally and annoying, but it still sounds like the actual character. And um yeah, well, Rob's voice is basically just, trust me, it was normal voice, just 
Fearing and Pitch and Tone and Doom and voices all the time, so that's just really have a signature voice. But, um, yeah, the weird, gargly, screechy uh, creature voice that Charlie Adley does for basically normal talking Buster. So, yeah, that's synonymous with Buster and basically every Charlie Adley character. So, recasting that character into someone who's just not doing that, it's just a stupid, idiotic decision. But I guess Eric Balls is doing something good, and I guess it sounds alright. But uh, yeah, also with Dizzy Devil, Bruce Marsh is still voice acting, but he hasn't been in the Looney Tunes thing since like the 20s and new Looney Tunes, when he stopped voicing his Sammy Sam. So um, yeah, but I'm pretty sure they're still getting back to the Dizzy Devil, and his voice does sound, still, still sound bootlegged, and uh, yeah, they really just changed all the actors except for some of the Looney Tunes teacher stuff. Because those actors are still voicing the characters, but I don't really see any reason why they couldn't get at least some of the original actors back. So just doing new actors who can't even do the I think it's all on the voice directors and the direction of the acting and not the actual voice actors themselves because I'm pretty sure that they'll probably do most directly good work, especially at Baza. Because he voiced basically every, well, most of the characters in just cartoons and. Yeah, so maybe he's a good voice actor, but I haven't heard of basically anyone else on the team except the other classic Wing Tune impersonator voice people. And, uh, anyway, uh, one of my, well, not really, uh, concerns, but more just thing I was thinking about is the format of the show. Because the original Tiny Tunes and its, um, fourth world breaking pop culture referencing glory and things. It was supposed to be like the original Looney Tunes cartoons, they have seven minute shorts. Sometimes the episodes had a theme with leading segments to the compilation episodes, and occasionally they would have whole 22 minute specials. But sometimes they wouldn't really have any sort of theme in just three separate seven minute shorts. But this show doesn't seem to be marked, none of the marketing actually shows that, and it seems like that's just going to be normal, like 11 to 22 minute storylines. And uh, in fact, the, none of the trailers or anything uh, really seem to show off any fourth world ring or pop culture referencing glory of the original. Probably because that people, a lot of people don't really remember or really care about the actual original show. And I think it was because just coming off the mostly awful Animaniacs review with them doing horrifying pop culture references and awful fourth world breaks every five seconds. But I guess because that's more synonymous with that show than Tiny Toons, because they were really doing that every first second of the original. But I'm wondering if, besides the original Looney Tunes characters existing, if there are going to be any of the fourth wall breaks or anything like that, referencing it just being a show like the original did, or is it just going to be just normal, plain 11 minute, 22 minute episodes, starting the characters doing wacky, idiotic adventures? And, uh,. Yeah, also, surprisingly, well, not really that surprisingly, but we haven't really gotten any actual details about the actual characters or personalities, so nothing from the personality seems to actually be changed from the original. But it seems to be the exact same, except that Sweetie is not part of the main cast. I didn't really mind Sweetie in the original. I haven't really seen that much of her cartoons. But basically just uh, her just torching furball for no reason. Well, sometimes with an actual reason, kind of like an old service in Tweety cartoon. So yeah, that was the basic point of the character. But now she's the main character, and I have no idea what her personality is supposed to be. But there is a little inkling hint in the theme song as to what the personality is going to be. Anyway, apparently the secret, but not really secret, behind the scenes reason of the creative team making Boston and Babs siblings is because they wanted some sort of positive sibling relationship shown on TV instead of the stereotypical sibling rivalry that's shown on most family shows and things, but I guess that's a good reason, except that it isn't. Why not just make, like, Sweetie have a brother or something, because she's a main character, give her more development and character and things. Why not just create a new character or a new sibling character instead of just making the two main characters of previously established franchise and world and history and lore of the characters then just wreck on the whole entire thing. That's just stupid and idiotic. Yeah, since it doesn't seem like, since it doesn't seem like they're going to try to do the variety show, fourth or big in pop culture, referencing glory uh, format of the original, it seems less likely that they're going to be horrifying and cringy pop culture references and jokes like that that are going to weaken the episodes or anything. So, once the first episode comes out, I might 
end up reviewing it depending on if I get it on a private site and it's actually I mean I know I watch it officially 